Well, hello and welcome to the Wednesday class in the Get the Ultimate Peace and Clarity through Ho'oponopono. My name is Barb Nash and I am your certified advanced Ho'oponopono practitioner. I created this room to share the healing power of Ho'oponopono with all of you. And I am doing this series of classes on Wednesday to um, help answer a few questions that some of you have asked. So, today's subject is you can't get to the divine directly. And that is, you might say, but Barb, if I am a product of the divine, if I myself am divine, why can't I reach the divine directly? Well, this is through the Ho'oponopono and how it works is you've got to go through the subconscious. It starts with the subconscious, the conscious, and then the superconscious, which is your direct link to the divine, is your, your superconscious. And the reason that we have to go through our subconscious, it has to do with all of the things that you carry that you don't know that you carry. And what I mean by that is, is we are not just affected by the things that have happened to us in our lives and our personal conditioning that happened in this life. But we are also carrying around the junk of our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents, and all of our ancestors through time. It's all piled up on us and you know, it's a heavy load we're carrying and that is why we've got to shoot down to the subconscious level and ask to get cleared of all of that. That's why when we're asking for forgiveness, we're asking for forgiveness for what it is that we've done, what we don't know that we've done, what we our relatives have done, what we don't know that they've done, and what our ancestors have done and what we don't know that they have done. We are asking for forgiveness for all of that. And that's a heavy burden that we are carrying. I mean, I started thinking about this and I was thinking, you know, both of my parents had a heavy load because they were both depression era babies. So I don't know, like probably most of you, your parents weren't depression era babies. Maybe your grandparents were but they both had a lot of baggage that uh, got heaped on me. And so that I was aware of. And you know, my mother, she had a hard life herself. I mean, her mother died when she was nine and she was uh, given to her stepfather and he didn't want her. So she ended up like living with her her stepfather's sister and taking care of his kids. And she was only nine years old when this happened. And therefore she had a lot of issues coming into this world that, you know, were piled upon me as well. And my father grew up in Kansas on a, in a, on a farm and he grew up in a shack because his mother, my grandmother, who I did know, she was the black sheep of the family. She was disowned from her family. Her family was pretty wealthy in the town that they lived in, but she got disowned from them and didn't, she got cut off. And so my father grew up dirt poor. And I actually got the honor of seeing the, the shack that he grew up in when I was a little kid, when we were on one of our road trips across the country. He actually showed me where he grew up and it was a little beat up shack. And so therefore, you know, he lived in that kind of environment as he was growing up throughout the depression. So he had a bunch of issues that got piled on me. And, and then there's like the, there's the issues that my grandmother caused that also got piled on me. And then, you know, and the, so on and so on. So we come into this life and we're carrying all of this crap that we don't even know that like we'll walk into a room and we may set somebody off 
and we don't know why and it's because of something that we're carrying around with us and and also you know it's like then I'm thinking of my family then I'm thinking of my ancestors and I'm thinking you know my mother's French she comes from a full French background like a, a French Canadian background and she also had some relatives that were involved in the uh, the Creole um, courtesan scene in New Orleans. So she had an aunt that was like a um, it was a Creole courtesan. So there's all of that kind of stuff that I'm carrying around with me. And my father's ancestry was German and Dutch, and I'm like three or fourth generation American from both sides. So. I'm thinking, okay, that's a lot of crap. And that's just going like five or six generations deep. And what you think of like, I have to do my, I'm thinking of doing my my um, ancestry on ancestry.com just to get an, an idea of what's really going on. But I'm thinking that's a lot of stuff that I'm carrying around that I need to clean on. And that's like when, you know, Dr. Hugh says you need to take responsibility for everything and you need to just work on yourself. I think that we each have enough to clean on for ourselves without worrying about cleaning up anybody else that we need to all focus on ourselves. So that's basically the message that I'm bringing through to you today is that we need to clean on our own stuff because I mean just my personal stuff that I brought into this life that I've the stuff that I've stirred up along my my little travels is huge and <laughs> if I just like work on that level of cleaning I'm gonna be cleaning for a long time but it's like so we we need to focus on ourselves. We need to focus on cleaning our own house and um, and not worry about anybody else's house. We need to, because if we clean our own house, it's going to, you know, affect everybody else anyway. So if we start with ourselves, we're going to affect everybody around us. And that's basically the message that I want to bring to you today is that we need to clean our own stuff and just let me check my notes here yeah and so this is all the stuff that we're carrying on our subconscious level that's why we have to start with our cleanse on the subconscious and then it goes up through to our superconscious to the divine and that's where we have our link with the divine and that's when we can be at zero and we can receive the divine inspiration. And so it would make sense that you would want to use more of the, the, the cleaning tools other than just the, the four phrases. And I know I did a class on that a few weeks ago. If you are paying attention and you've gotten the link to my YouTube channel, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can find all of the classes that I've done and you can look for the one that's titled the cleaning tools and you can you can review that and it will give you a review of the corn and the blue soul water which I am always drinking right here so when we clean we cleanse with these things it's just another level of cleansing that we can do and that's basically what I wanted to bring to you today is that we need to clean on all of these things that we don't even know that there's stuff that we don't know that we don't know. There's tons of levels of cleaning that we need to do in order to make things right. And we have no idea how much this stuff affects us. Like, um, I had a, one of the members of this group was contacting me earlier in the week asking about 
how do I clean for um, where she lives? They've got flooding happening and it's uh, destroying the areas where she's living at. And she was saying that, you know, how do we, how do we clean on this? And, I, you know, and I said, well, you need to continue saying the phrases, but you need to know what you're cleaning on. You need to know that you're cleaning on everything that, that you know that you've done and everything that you don't know that you've done, everything that your family's done, everything that your ancestors have done. And you need to clean on all of that because that brings, all of those things bring in centuries of trouble, which bring in all of the, the mischief that goes on in your life. And that's beyond all of the crap that's going on in your head. It's, that's beyond all of the conditioning that's happened to you in this life, which we need to get out of our heads so that we can, you know, feel our ways through life. And the thing, when I say that we need to go with what we feel and not with what we think, and it's important to differentiate between the feelings that are driven by the nonsense and the feelings that are felt through your your body, the feelings that are felt through your heart. It's probably confusing for many of you. I know it can be confusing for me at times to think, wait a second, I'm having this feeling because of something that happened to me, because of something that somebody did to me, and that's why I feel that way. Well, if I have to, if I'm going through that much talking in my brain about how I'm feeling about something, then I have to, that's a one way to know that it's, it's not really how you're feeling, it's how you're conditioned. And that's really important to know the difference between what you are conditioned to feel and what your body feels, what the, you know, like the love that you feel. And that's what you really want to go for when you're navigating through life. You want to go for at your core, how do you feel about it? Does it make you feel uh, full? Does it make you feel loved? Do you feel radiated by that move? Or is it a negative feeling? And it's, it's really tricky. And I'm not going to say that it's easy to know the difference because I mean, I think we all have times when something triggers us emotionally and we don't realize it's because of the conditioning that it's triggered for us. And that's when we need to do the cleaning and get back to zero. Because when we can walk into a room and be at zero, there won't be any problems. So it's like that's that's why we want to do the cleaning. We want to get as close to zero as we can be so that we aren't stirring up stuff when we, <laughs> when we walk into a room. Um, stirring up stuff that we don't even know that we're stirring up. And I think we all do that. I mean, I think I, you know, like sometimes I forget to walk lightly and I might just bulldoze my way into a room and with all of my opinions and feelings and not realize that I'm stomping all over somebody. But then again, it's like, when is it? When do you come to that point where you're being true to yourself and it's not it's not about anybody else, you know, it's like you need to be true to yourself and not worry about anybody else. But you want to take responsibility for everything. So it's like, it's, it's quite a heavy, heavy load to walk through life with, uh, where 
we're navigating through a lot of crap and we're carrying a heavy load. And so we need to just continue to, you know, keep cleaning, keep saying the phrases, saying the prayer and drinking the water and waiting for the divine inspiration to come through. And I hope that I didn't make things more confusing for you. And I hope that um, you understand what I mean by you can't go directly to the divine. You've got to go through the subconscious and unload all of that stuff before you can get to the divine. And that's what I mean by that. So if you have any questions, just put them in the comment section because of the way that the live works for me through my phone. I can't see any of the comments as they're happening live. I do apologize for that. But if you put your questions in the comment section, I'll be more than happy to answer them. And I think I'm going to wrap this one up and I will see you next week. And I wish everybody happiness and light. And I hope this video finds you all well. So I'll see you next week. All right, bye.